Now, today uh, we started on our journey to be another one. I know that some people are like, oh, I'm sick of the journey to be. He's always talking about it. But unfortunately, I am always talking about it because it's kind of my thing. It's kind of my focus. And you know, when something gets gets under your skin, when something comes becomes a part of you, you can't help but talk about it and study it and think about it. And that's 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 what I do. So sitting up here by this window with this nice light. I love the way the light comes in through stained glass window. I just wanted to share a little bit with you about what we talked about today on island number one of the journey to be. And island number one is the island where we make the confession that I need something. Um, I, I need something. I have a hole in my life that I can't fill on my own. And we looked at a passage from Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verses uh, 10 through 13. And uh, I love Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes is one of my favorite books in the Bible because King Solomon, as he was writing this book, was questioning. Um, he was wondering, what's it all about? And what's the big picture? All the things that each one of us do, I, I can say, at least I know for me, I know I've asked that questions, those questions. I say, well, what's it all about? And uh, I love the fact that there is a book in the Bible that deals with that kind of thing. And it's not one of those books that says, okay, you know, here's the standard patent answer. You know, this is what we do in the church so many times. We give a standard answer. You know, we have a, a big question about something or a concern about something. And we, we kind of have this, like, okay, just add water, kind of add um, focus on it. Say that this is standard patent answer number two for any question that deals with this. And this is stat and pat, uh, patent answer number one for any question that deals with this. Um, and we're very quick at just giving those, I would say, kind of canned answers to things. When the fact of the matter is, is that one of the answers that we have to embrace in our faith, our following of Jesus Christ, is that we don't know. Don't know, don't understand, don't get it, don't like it, but that's the way it is. And uh, I, I see that in Solomon's writing in Ecclesiastes. So we went through the process of, of studying that passage, Ecclesiastes 3, 10 through 13, and we asked some questions. And one of the first questions that we asked is, uh, does, does, uh, does it really matter what we do? Uh, does what we do make a difference? And uh, we talked about that, that premise that God doesn't care what we do. Um, that's not the business that God is in caring about what we do. God cares about who we are because God know, knows and understands that once we spend the time and really discover who we are, our doing will fall into place. And uh, if we try to change our doing, um, if we try to change our being through our doing, then that's behavior modification and that doesn't work. God's not in the business of behavior modification. So we talked about that. Uh, we said that our doing does matter. But why it matters is because it reveals who we are. And so if you today don't really know who you are, then I invite you to just spend some time, spend this next week with maybe a little notebook in your pocket, maybe a little notes uh, app on your phone, and write down what you do. You know, or write down what you do on a daily basis. And at the end of the week, you'll be able to read your to-do list and you'll find out who you are. Because what you do will always reveal who you are, but, but uh, what you do will never change who you are. The next thing we looked at was this question is, why do we always want to know what God is up to? In the passage from Ecclesiastes, he says that uh, you know, we, we know that God's been up to something from the beginning to end, but we just don't know what. And we, we talked about the fact, why do we always want to know? Inquiring minds want to know. And we, we talked about the fact that we love to gossip. Uh, we, we love to either talk about other people or listen to other people talk about other people. Um, and that's just that's just one of our flaws as <laughs> as sin stained human beings. But we want to know what God's up to because of the fact that we're created in the image of God. So we have this notion, we have this desire to know what God is up to. We said squirrels don't worry about what God is up to uh, because they're not wired that way. They're not created in the image of God. So we talked about the fact that uh, we we have to constantly be dealing with looking for what God is up to. We know that there is a God, and we just don't know what he's always up to from the beginning to end. And then we talked about the, the childlike qualities of uh, being a child. In Matthew's Gospel, Jesus said, uh, Let the little children come to me, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. And we, we talked about the fact that children, being a child is not about an age thing. It's about a way of being. 
Um, and children are able to make the most out of any situation that they're in. Um, they, they enjoy life um, and they don't need necessarily all the trappings to, to enjoy life. I shared a story about how when I was younger and going to my grandmother's house and she lived in a small house and the only thing that she had was this yellow ball. And I could take that yellow ball into her itty bitty little backyard between her house and the garage and the alley. And I could uh, play for an entire day with that little ball. Um, because my imagination as a child was able to allow me to do that. Somewhere down the road, uh, all of us hit a tipping point and we lose that ability. And uh, we see in Ecclesiastes 3, 10 through 13 that, um, at least I see, Solomon rediscovering that ability to get the most out of life, to get the most out of everything that God has given him to, to eat and to drink and to enjoy his job, those are all gifts from God. And that's a childlike quality. And that's the kind of thing I believe that Jesus is referring to when he says, let the little children come, not because they're young, but because they haven't hit that tipping point yet where they are skewed and they're worried more about electric bills and global warming than they are about getting the most out of every day. So I had three points that I wanted everybody to get. And uh, point number one was that until you admit that you're without, you can never grow. You'll never make a move. Um, it's that, that's that brokenness piece that we struggle with so often when it comes to our faith. And until we can say that uh, we can't do it, we'll, we'll never be able to figure out how to do it. Because uh, we'll, we'll be used, going under our own effort. And that's the second point. Then anything that we do on our own to try to fill that hole that's in our life. Remember, I need something. There's a hole in my life I can't fill on my own. And anything that we do on our own to fill that hole won't, won't work. It might work for a little bit, but it won't work for the long term. It might make us feel better for a season, but it won't work for a long term. And finally, um, the challenge was for people to develop a to-be list. We're very good at to-do lists. And I, and I challenged the, the congregation to say, okay, this week when you make your to-do list, make a to-do list because to-do lists are great. You need to-do lists. That's, that's wonderful. Keeps us organized. But also start to develop a to-be list. You know, and put down, you know, descriptive terms about who you are as a person and say, how can I be that person? How can I be more childlike today? Um, how can I be more compassionate today? You know, those kind of things. Um, that's an example of to-be list. Uh, so it is important for us to talk about as this on this journey that island number one, <coughs> excuse me, deals with who we are as opposed to what we do. Because what we do will always reveal who we are, but uh, what we do will never change who we are. If we want to change what we do, we got to change our very being. You know, that, that's where it has to all start. So the challenge was to to develop a to-be list this week. I think that kind of covers everything. Uh, it uh, covers everything in a nutshell that we went over today. I uh, hope that uh, if you weren't able to make it this week, that you'll make it next week. If you're not able to make it next week, that you'll tune back in to Hot Fudge Sunday and kind of get, get a little snippet of what we talked about. And uh, until then, I hope that this week has a great you, and I'll see you soon.